All right, um, 4.2. Write a biconditional definition for the term congruent figures. Did we give you something on the whole? Figures are congruent if and only if their corresponding parts are congruent. Okay, sounds good. Um, is there any questions you had about homework? Any? Yeah. Number nine on 4.2. Okay, find all the possible measures for it. Oh, okay, that makes sense. We had this triangle. We are 90 on this triangle. And we know this and this are congruent. And this is x squared. And the other one is 10x minus 21. Is that right? Um, for all the, find all the possible measures for A. A and R would be the exact same thing. Um, first thing I would know is I would set those equal to each other. That's about the first step there. We know they should be equivalent. If I have a 90 in that angle and a 90 in that angle, I know that right now we're looking at, you know, this plus this have to equal 90. So I know that this angle here, which is angle A, I believe, I know that angle A has to go somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. Would that make sense to do that? Okay, so let's just see what happens here. I got x squared minus 10x plus 21 is equal to 0. And this might not be the right way to do this. I haven't worked this problem out yet. So I got uh, minus 7 minus 3. So x is equal to 7 and x is equal to 3. So we have two different answers. So things that we need to look out for on this problem. Um, if I plug my 7 back in, 7 squared is 49, and then 10 times 7 is 70. 70 minus 21 is 49 as well. Is that right? Okay. And if I plug 3 in, I'd get 3 squared, which is 9, and then 30 minus 21, which is 9. So I have this angle and this angle are either 49 or 9. Does that make sense to say that? Is that legitimate? So that means that angle x, so let's, if we made this angle here 49, that would have to mean that that angle there would have to be 41. So if that was 49, then that angle is 41. Or if it was 9 degrees, if this was a 9 degree angle here, then that means that this angle would have to be 81. So it's either 81 or 41 degrees, depending upon which solution would work. Hey, let me ask you, you all this. Is it possible that... If I had solved this, that if I factor a quadrilateral, or excuse me, a quadratic, could one of the answers when you solve a quadratic come out to be negative? Does that work? Like if something came out to be x plus 5 and x minus 3, that would give me an answer of x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 3. So could I... Theoretically, by factoring, come up with a negative answer. Yeah, but what, and if we had come up with a negative answer on one of those, what would have happened if we would have plugged it back in? Like, let's say we came up with negative nine. So on that 10x minus 21, that would have given me negative 90 minus 21, which is negative 111. Could I, in a triangle, have an angle measure of a negative 111 degrees? No, that doesn't make sense. Now, I will tell you that you can indeed have an angle that is negative, and that has to do something with the unit circle as you go around the unit circle, but that goes along with trigonometry that we'll get to in a little bit. But do you feel that it might be 
possible that you would get an answer that wouldn't make sense if dealing with a quadratic. I just said it could, so theoretically we might get an answer that wouldn't make sense. A negative angle or a negative length of a side. Anyone know what that kind of solution is called? No? It's called an ex extraneous solution. Okay? And w where it happens a lot, you know, and this doesn't happen. This one worked out perfectly fine. But where that kind of thing happens a lot is if you were to have a graph like this, there are solutions that you think are should work when you solve it. And when you plug it back into the original, it doesn't work. But so just to keep in mind, yes, these these answers here and here should result in these answers happening. Those are legitimate answers happening, 49 and 41. Nothing awkward about it. It didn't come up to a negative number. Okay. Other questions from homework? Yeah. 5A. Okay. Is that the triangle or the triangle? Looks kind of like that, correct? And then we know that. We know that. We know this is 40 by giving us that. A, E, B. So this angle here, they are telling us is 17 x minus y. And then angle A, this angle here, is 12x plus 4y. Is that right? Okay. Um, so things that I should know up here, I know that... 12x plus 4y has to be equal to 40. Is that okay? And can we clean that up? Lucas, put your phone away, please. Can I clean that up a little bit? Make it simpler? What can I do to everything to make it simpler? Divide, if I divide everything by 4, so that's a 3x plus y equals 10. Okay, so that's going to be one of my one of my problems that I'll utilize. Does everyone feel comfortable with me doing that? Now, if I were to take this angle and this angle and this angle, they sh all three of those should add up to 180. Do you agree? So this angle here, this angle here, and this angle here should all add up to 180. If I subtract 90 from 180, what do I get? So I so let me just say that one, I'll show you. So I have this plus this plus 90 equals 180. Well, let's clean this up a little bit. I can combine 12x and 17x to get 29x. Agree? I have 4y minus y. That's plus 3y. Is that okay? And then if I subtract 90, I get the whole thing equal to 90. Does that clean up at all? Meaning, can I divide everything by 3? No. Okay, but I want to take this problem and this problem and try and combine them together. And I can combine them together. If I add them together right now, I'm going to get 32x plus 4y equals 100. That didn't help me. There's something I can multiply times one of the equations, either the blue or the purple, that if I then added the two equations together, one of the letters falls out. Negative 3, I like it. So if I multiply this whole thing by a negative 3, that's going to result in negative 9x minus 3y, bless you, equals negative 30. And then I can, if I just put this one right underneath it, I get 29x plus 3y equals 90. So now if I add those together, what falls out? The y's, so I get 20x is equal to 60, so x equals 3, okay, 
So if I know that x is equal to 3, I could then plug it in right here. So that's going to give me 9 plus y equals 10. So y equals 1. So my solution to this problem is 3 comma 1, or x equals 3 and y equals 1, however you want to represent it. Other questions from the board? Yeah. 3C? Measure of x, y. So they tell us that we have this. That's a z, excuse me. Is congruent to this. And then we have a couple of triangles drawn here. So if that's 33 degrees. That's x, y, and z. And we have another triangle drawn like this. So this might be the same triangle, just rotated. So they tell us this is 124 degrees. That's L and M, and that's 8. 3C, they wanted to do the measure of x, y. For these extras here. So, man, do you see those cat like reflexes? All right, let's see. The only thing that would make sense to me. We know they're congruent, so let's see. The order, x, y is this order, so they want ml, mn, excuse me. So we, what do we know mn? And the reason I have it, the order of the letters, m, x, y, mn, x, y, mn, x, y, mn, they have to be the same side. Because the tri they told us the triangles are congruent. So that means that XY goes with MN, YZ goes with NL, XZ goes with ML. The order is important. So what's the only thing we could say that XY has to be equal to? What's the only thing that we know it has to be equal to? MN, and we know MN is how much? Five B. This here's 28, and then they tell us that angle A is the same thing as 4x plus y. Angle C is 6x minus y. Okay, so could I find this angle here, just in that third tri second triangle? 28 and 130 is 158. 180 minus 158 is? 97. What is 158 and 180 minus 158? 22? So we're able to find that this angle here is 22 degrees because the sum of the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. And this 22 degrees goes along with that. So I get 4x plus y is equal to 22. That's our first thing. And then angle.
equal c. That has to go along with this 28, right? Because if those two angles are congruent and those two angles are congruent, that means the third angle has to be congruent. So that's going to give us that 6x minus y is equal to 28. And if we add those together as is, they nicely break apart. 40 or 50? 50? Yeah. So x equals 5. If I know x is equal to 5, I could plug it back into either of the originals. I'll plug it in the top. So I get 20 plus y equals 22. So y equals 22. How you feel? Eight okay? Um, a lot of times, this is gonna sound this this dates me. A few things that I really enjoy on the weekend. I enjoy drinking coffee, eating my breakfast, and reading the actual newspaper. We get the news. We're like like one of six people in the city of Littleton. But I love it. But sometimes in the newspaper, these kind of problems, they'll put a puzzle in there. And a lot of times it has, has to do with geometry. So I am a math dork. I'm sorry. Don't feel bad. But these are the types of things that they put in there. And you have to use a little bit of logical soup in, to, in order to get through it. Um, would you, is, homework's two pages, right? Go ahead and make sure they're stapled and name is on it and bring them on up, please. So, guys, girls, while I'm handing out what your notes are, I just want I want you all to know this. Um, you know, this is my 21st year teaching high school. I also taught some college when I was in college. I was a TA and for professors, and they'd throw me in because they knew I was a math geek and science geek, so I, they'd throw me in the classes and say, go, go teach. So I've been doing that as well. And th there was times that I would, one time I went into a physics class and there was about 300 people in there and I was told go teach about kinematic equations, which is all how force vectors work. And using law of sines, law of cosines, which we haven't gotten to yet, but we will. And it was, you know, it was intimidating, but it was also awesome. But I tell you, in all the years of teaching, whether it was college, or this, one, I'll tell you, college is an absolute pain in the you-know-what to teach because there's, you don't know who the heck the students are. There's so many people in the class. You're like, Wah. So you know, all you're doing is really just talking. You're not getting class participation because, well, there's too many people to participate. But I, I tell you that I am so impressed with this school. And I'm impressed with this school for a number of reasons. But it really, this, this comes from the heart. When I first came here, the things that were going on in Douglas County were so cruddy to the teachers. I was really, from, I had updated my resume the year before I had chosen to leave to look to get a job in industry to lead teaching. That's how bad things are going for teachers down in Douglas County. And I think you all realize that I teach because I love what I do. But uh, when I came here, it was like just magic because, one, you are all very kind people. Yeah, thank you. I mean, seriously, you have wonderful families, wonderful parents, wonderful siblings that have allowed you to be really wonderful people. So thank you for being who you are. And... You know, this is my third year now here at Creek. But I will tell you, each and every day, it's just better and better. And with kids like you, teaching is awesome. It's just, and it was never the kids that were bad. It was just the support structures that were in place that really make this building here a really, really special high school. And I, I just want you all to realize that this high school, though you want to say that it happens everywhere, it doesn't. I mean, I taught at Las Vegas Academy, which was a performing arts magnet school in Vegas my first three years. 
Yes, I had some cool kids that were now actors and actresses and singers. It was fantastic. It was like, wow, this is unbelievable. But they were Vegas wasn't the nicest place in the world to live. Then I moved to Reno, and I was teaching at an inner city school. We had about 75% of our student population was on free and reduced lunch and free and reduced breakfast. Like, school was the only place these kids had a place to eat. I had kids that did not have a place to do homework. I was really successful with my soccer program because I realized a lot of my players did not have a place to do homework at home, so I made my classroom a place that they had to show up right after school to do homework for two hours, and then you go to practice, and if you didn't come to do homework in my classroom, you don't come to practice and you're not playing. So it was very successful. But there was a lot of kids that did not have that situation. I went, one of my, Efren Galindo I had, was a really good forward, really good. And uh, during our season, we were just being unbelievable. He stopped showing up to practice. He stopped showing up to um, do homework. So I went, and I found his home. And Efren's neighborhood was this. It was basically an apartment complex that was a U-shape. There was a guy on either roof that had pigeons in baskets. So if somebody was coming into that neighborhood or that complex that shouldn't have been there, they would release these pigeons, and that would tell the gang members that somebody is coming into our territory who shouldn't be there. Okay, it was bad. And this kid, I knock on the door, and I see him. I say, Camp Coach, my dad needs me to work. He was one of 14 people living in a two-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment. His bed would be slept in by aunts and uncles and cousins when he wasn't sleeping there. So if, if he was sleeping at night, somebody was working at night and then would come sleep in his bed during the day. It didn't exist. And it was heartbreaking because it was here was a kid who really wanted to try and get out, but because of the suppression of society of what he was living in, probably was never going to leave a gang-infested type of life. And that was sad, real sad. Um, I also became known as, hey, you're that one white coach. And I was really accepted into these gang communities as I'm that one white coach. And I was accepted because I gave kids a chance. I gave them the ability to try and better themselves. And I showed that I cared and I Things like that. And there was times that some of those guys that would show up to some of the gangs, they had, or show, show up to the gangs, to our soccer games, I mean, they had gang tattoos up and down their necks, you know, arms, teardrops, you know, if you know what teardrops mean. They got the, the web, you know, up to six bands of web, which means they're sixth generation in that gang. I mean, just some pretty tough stuff. And though some of those kids were able to get out, and use education to better their what their lifestyle had been and their upbringing had been. A lot of them were left behind. And then I got the SHAP down in Parker, which was a relatively great school when I got there, and I saw some unbelievable teaching. And then things changed in Douglas County after I was there for about three years, and there was about six years that they were – cutting teachers' paychecks because we were, quote-unquote, making too much money. I don't know what y'all have ever heard about a teacher, but uh, I didn't sign a multi-million dollar teaching deal, no matter where I was at. So it was kind of a joke going, okay, you're taking a teacher who's making X amount of money, and you're cutting it? And then they did other things like they... When I was down there, they, to act like we could get a raise, they forced us all to teach six classes. When I first got to Chaparral, I was teaching five classes. 
and my maximum amount of students was 130. When I left, and so this includes my med class, which always has a, had you know, about 100 kids. When I left, it was we had to teach six classes with 180 kids. And that was bad. And it actually made less money. So my first three years, I made good money. And then after my third year, they started cutting our money and giving us all these excuses of, oh, no, no. And then when I came here, I made more money, which is awesome. Um, but I just want you all to know that you all very, should feel very fortunate. You're in a really good place for education. And uh, you know, some of the things that I have seen as a teacher, just know that you guys in real are in an awesome place. And you know, no matter how tough things might seem, there are some kids in the United States that are dealing with some of the worst horrific stuff you could ever imagine. I could tell you about some of the gang fights I was involved in breaking up. Um, as a male teacher at this school in Reno, we were expected to be in the hallways to break up fights between classes because they happen daily. And some of the fights that we would break up, you'd get you know, two young freshmen that wanted to be in the gang that say, hey, go get in a fight over there on that side of campus so they could jump a kid in in the bathroom into a gang. You know, jump in is not, you know, it's not a poetry reading, I'll tell you that. It's just pretty horrific and scary. So, but thank you all for being who you are. I just want you to know that you guys are in a really awesome place. And now let's do geometry. Sorry. And who wanted to, oh, sorry you weren't in story yesterday. He missed out. We gotta let him know. Lol. All right, section four point three. Proving triangles are congruent using side, side, side. SSS. Develop an understanding how to prove two triangles are congruent by using side, side, side postulate. Okay. We good? Let's do it. We know that two triangles are congruent if. Their corresponding parts are congruent. So if all the parts of this triangle here are congruent to all the parts of this triangle here, then the two triangles are congruent to each other. And we said congruent yesterday. The simplest term is equal. Everything about it is equal. This angle goes with this angle. This and this and this and this. Side, side, side. The question is, do we need to know all about the six pairs of corresponding parts of congruent to say that the two triangles are congruent? And the answer is no. Now we did show yesterday that if we had the angles of one triangle congruent to all the angles of another triangle, even though the triangles were two different sizes, we still couldn't say they were congruent because it was obvious that the sides weren't the same, correct? And a real simple way to think about it is if you think about an equilateral triangle where all the angles are 60 degrees, you can have a really small equilateral triangle that all the angles are 60 degrees and a really large one. And it's obvious that the small and the large are not congruent because the sides are different length. So we talked about your phone being a place where you know you take a picture of your friend, you can identify your friend because all of the angles are maintaining the angles that should be, even though they're much smaller. So, so the angles don't, but there's other ways that we can prove triangles are congruent, and we're looking at using side, side, side for right now. Uh, would it be enough to have one side congruent to the corresponding side of a second triangle. Let's see. So, could I have? Let's see if I can make that happen. Copy. Okay, I've just duplicated two red sides. So would you agree by copying and pasting the red segments are the same length? Make sense? Yes, one's a little lower than the other, but they should be about the same length because I copy and pasted it. Agree? So do you think it's enough for just one side to make a triangle congruent to another triangle? Everything about it. 
shaking heads. So let's see, what can we do? Let's do, let's do this. Oops. It'd be better if I could connect my dots. So I have that triangle. And then could I have this triangle? Now I do have the red side is equal in length, agree? But is it pretty easy to identify that this triangle here and this triangle here are not congruent? I mean, even though that this segment here is the exact same as this segment, because we copied and pasted, this triangle here and this triangle here are completely different triangles. Is that okay? So we that's our counterexample. We can't say that having one side congruent to another side of a triangle, or two different sides of a triangle, two different sides of or one side of this triangle and one side of this triangle, two different triangles, that's a not enough to say the two triangles are congruent. Okay? What about if we had two congruent sides? Let's see what this is. something here? Oh yeah. Sound very similar to me. Okay. So two congruent sides. I don't need to pull that up. I will do this. Let's do So the blue and the green and the blue and the green are the same size on each. The blue is congruent to the blue and the green is congruent to the green. Agree? We just did a copy and paste everything we know. <clears throat> so is that enough? So if I take this, let's rotate that around, perhaps move it down here, and I'll connect that in a sec, and then this. If I were to connect this vertice to there and this vertice to here, can we all agree that the blue and the green triangle or triangles are not congruent to each other? So I'll just do a yellow. Can we all agree that those two triangles are not congruent even though I have two sides that are completely equal? What do you think? So we've just provided a counterexample, and I think the copy and paste is a pretty good tool to use on this. I, when I first started teaching, I was using chalk, and that, that wasn't that cool. Just get chalk all over your pants, and make sure you washed your hands. They're so dry from the chalk. All right, I keep, no, we're not going to do this. Sorry, I'm not cutesy. I'm only so cutesy to a point, but I wasn't going to have it break spaghetti noodles up. Sorry. Okay, we could say, we can write this as a fact to a postulate. If three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two Triangles are congruent. Okay? All right, so if I have red, green, blue, Okay, so the red, the green, the blue, and the red, the green, the blue should be the exact same size, yes? So let's do this. We'll rotate you around, and we're going to bring that down right here. Do the same thing. And I'll rotate 
adjust it a little bit. Okay, there's that triangle. So let's do this in different order. So I'll have the blue on this side. Let's bring the green over here. Rotate that. And the red. Rotate it. Two. Oops, that didn't work. ideas? Wait, what? I wanted to rotate the whole thing as one, but I have three copy, different. Copy, copy. Take a, take yeah. a copy, paste. Yeah. Do you know how to group it? I, 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 all right, so hang on. Let's try this. So we have copy and paste. No, that's still how to have the three. What I wanted to do, and I apologize, I can't think of how to do it right now. See, they all move independently. That's pretty cool. Wait, doesn't that mean you can rotate it too? Can you not change it? Oh, I think it's in like file or edit. What are you seeing? Oh, I have no idea. Infinite cloner. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh. 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 Wait. What's that happen here? Do. Ideas? Edit. Edit? Wait, hold on. Whoa. I went SML. Can you right click it? Recognize that shape? Yeah. Go up, 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 up. Up, up. Group. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, baby. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, love you guys. All right. So, watch this. Ready? So, exact same shape. No matter what order I put them together, same exact triangle. Mm -hmm. So if you have three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another triangle, they are the exact same triangle. Okay, so it's using side, side, side. Cool. So since we'll be showing the sides are congruent, what are some possible ways to know that two segments are congruent? Well, we could. Measure them, right? We could measure with the compass. We haven't used a compass in a while, but point to pencil, point to pencil. So that might be some ways. So proof. All right, let's see if we can go through this proof. Let's do it in the least amount of steps possible. A, B is congruent to C, B. And then we can say that A, D is congruent to C, D. Uh, so that's given for both of those. So we know that AB is congruent to CB, and we know that AD is congruent to CD. What's the very last thing we have up here? We need to prove one more side. BD. Can I say this? This is going to seem really redundant. BD is congruent to BD. Duh, right? 
This is called the reflexive property. Which means that. So do I have side, side, side of the top triangle? And do I have side, side, side of the bottom triangle? I do. So now I can go ahead and prove that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And the reason we can say that is because of side, side, side. We know all three sides. Do what I do? Oh. I, I hadn't started it yet. Proof two. So I'm not, I'm, I know the given should be put, but let's just hurry through it. So I know that FM here and FN, okay, we got that. We know DM here and HN here. And we want to, oh, we want to prove. We're looking to prove this, right? Let's see, highlighter. Prove this triangle here is congruent to this triangle here. Yes? Is there a segment up there that is shared? Uh, MN. MN. So after you put your givens, then you go ahead and put MN is congruent to MN. Ooh, MN, not MD. And that is reflexive property. And then you can start putting things together because then you can say, well, I know that DM plus MN is equal to DN. And I added segments together there. And then I can say that MN plus NH is equal to MH. And by you doing some manipulation and substitution, you would be able to start figuring out by angle or segment addition postulate that you have a shared thing. No, I'm just looking. I'm looking. I will finish these notes tomorrow. How's that sound? So start. Will you guys and girls start on the homework, and we'll fin make sure we get it finished by the end of tomorrow's class. Good deal.